Age macular degeneration, the first cause of visual loss among the elderly in industrialized countries, involves the macular area, a small zone one to two millimeters wide, located in the center of the retina and fed mostly by choroidal vessels situated by the pigmentary epithelium. The macula takes in the largest concentration of visual cells and therefore provides sharp vision for reading, writing, and driving. The remainder of the retina provides the fuzzier perception of the surrounding visual field. Because of the aging process and various environmental factors such as hypertension, arthrosclerosis, continued sun exposure, and heredity, blood nutrients cannot reach the retina. Three various developments may occur. First, drusen formation, which are intraretinal deposits perceived as small scotomas. The patient has difficulty discriminating letters, eventually has difficulty reading an entire word inside a phrase. A more advanced stage may develop towards atrophy, called dry AMD. Macular visual cells progressively die, replaced by an atropic scar. Central vision goes through a non-reversible destruction process. A more advanced stage may develop towards exudation, called wet AMD. To improve irrigation, the retina secretes a growth factor, VEGF, which stimulates a new vessel formation in the choroid. The trouble is that these new vessels disrupt the barrier of the pigmentary epithelium and secrete serum, which detaches and infiltrates the retina. The patient experiences distortion of images, of vertical and horizontal lines, a decrease in color sensitivity, and a drop in visual acuity, with the feeling that one's glasses are no longer adequate. Eventually, these new vessels will bleed, central retinal visual cells will be destroyed, and a dark blind spot will develop in the center of vision. The patient is still able to move around and perceive surrounding objects, but becomes unable to read, write, drive, and recognize faces. The disease is related to aging process. One will easily understand that there are few chances for definitive cure. In an attempt to stop this adamant evolution towards central vision loss, various treatment modalities have been successfully proposed in the last 20 years. These treatments affect mainly the exudative form. At first, laser photocoagulation Laser is a beam full of energy which produces heat, which will destroy the new vessels. The trouble is that the adjacent visual cells will get burned simultaneously. Therefore, lasers are used in some specific cases only when its application is riskless. Secondarily, surgery was attempted. It is possible to remove the new vessels without damaging adjacent cells. However, surgical maneuver is delicate and not without risk of problems and complications. Therefore, surgery as well is limited to very specific cases. Next, photodynamic therapy was attempted. A photosensitizer is injected into an arm vein. Then, 15 minutes later, when it has reached the location of the new vessels and settled down, a low-intensity specific laser beam is applied resulting in their selective coagulation. The treatment is painless. Several sessions are often necessary. During the 48 hours post-session, the patient must avoid exposing the skin and eyes to sunlight, 
self-tanning, or dentist surgical lamps. Lately, anti-VEGF intraocular injections have been introduced. Anti-VEGF are medicines which act as selective weed killers. They result in new vessel destruction by fighting the growth factors originally responsible for their own proliferation. As they spare the visual cells, anti-VEGF are able to improve vision, but their efficiency is transitory most of the time. Therefore, several injections are often necessary, sometimes during a period of several years. Frequency of injections depends on the type of anti-VEGF injected, as well as individual reactions. Regular follow-up controls will be performed by the physician, including eye examination, OCT, and angiography to detect recurrences. In the case of a reoccurrence, reinjection will be performed as soon as possible. Before the injection, it is recommended not to wear contact lenses during the week preceding the injection. And the day of the injection, Patients are advised to avoid makeup and jewelry and to shower with disinfectant soap. Following the injection, eye drops will be prescribed and administered. The patient will be advised to avoid potential contamination from others who may be ill. If the eye would become red or painful or in case of sudden decrease in vision or unusual glare, the patient should call the ophthalmologist immediately.